Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I bid to our respected lecturer, Associate Prof. Dr. Nik Muhammad Azwan. Today, our group will be presenting about post-radiation mucositis. My name is Hazira Bindi Azan. My other team members that will be presenting this topic are Izam Haikal, Farahani, Khairul Ikwan, and Amali Naisha. We will begin with the definition of post-radiation mucositis. According to our Cancer Foundation, post-radiation mucositis occurs when cancer treatment breaks down the rapidly dividing epithelial cells lining the gastrointestinal tract which goes from the oral to the anus, leaving the mucosal tissue exposed to ulceration and infection. Whereas, National Center of Biotechnology Information, or known as NCBI, defined post-radiation mucositis as a major dose-limiting toxicity in head and neck cancer patients and one of the major ionizing radiation toxicities and normal tissue injuries that result from radiotherapy. Next, we'll be moving on to the WHO classification of mucositis. The WHO scale is dependent on both objective and subjective variables and measure anatomical symptomatic as well as functional components of oral mucositis. So, grade 1 mucositis is considered mild as it involves soreness and erythema, while grade 2 mucositis involves erythema and ulceration, but patient can still tolerate solid diet, hence it considered as moderate. Grade 3 mucositis is considered severe because the ulcer came with extensive erythema and patient can merely consume liquid diet. Meanwhile, grade 4 mucositis where the oral indication become impossible is considered as life-threatening mucositis. The signs and symptoms of oral mucositis include difficulty in swallowing or talking, red and swollen mouth and gingiva, presence of blood in the mouth, soreness and pain in mouth, throat, gingiva and tongue, feeling of dryness, mild burning or pain during eating, soft, white teeth, patches or pus in the mouth or on the tongue, thicker saliva and increased mucus in the oral. My name is Kunur Abadi Aisha with the team. So I'm going to talk about the pathogenesis of post-radiation mucositis. Ulcerative mucositis is mostly occur at doses of 30 gram. This corresponds to a period of 2-3 to three weeks after the exposure of radiotherapy. Radiotherapy causes DNA damage to the exposed cells. These exposed cells, such as epithelial cells, endothelial cells, fibroblasts, and macrophages, release reactive oxygen species, RS. This RS then causes injury to the basal epithelial cells. After a long period of exposure, this will result to apoptosis of the cells. Assalamualaikum, my name is Farahani and I will continue with the consequences of post-radiation mucositis. The consequences can be divided into four scopes, which are consequences into oral, systemic, physical, and underlying disease. The first one is consequences to an oral region. They will cause pain and the oral region can be the portal entry for organism that will cause further complications. Next, patient will be having slow healing involving the oral mucosa. Other than that, patient also will experience sore and dry mouth together with tooth and gum disease. The second one is systemic complication. The patient will present with hypovolemia, electrolyte abnormalities, malnutrition, and reduced immunity. In severe condition, it may cause fatal. While the third one is physical consequences, which will cause the patient experience taste loss that will inhibit appetite, indirectly causing eating difficulty. Next, the patient also will have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and also weight loss. And the last one is underlying disease, which means it will make the condition become more worse. If the patient is having mucositis with neutropenia, it will increase the chances to get septicemia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Zafaikan. We continue with the treatment of post-relation mucositis. The first one is locally applied agents such as glycer ketone acid, which has mechanical action implemented in the relief of pain. Systemically applied agents such as cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors, they will suppress and have kappa beta, reduce pro inflammatory cytokine production, and inhibit angiogenesis. The third one is the oral microbial load reduction agent, show beneficial effects in prophylaxis and reduction of the severity. The last one is the use of ice chips to reduce the inflammation in the mouth. So for this slide, this video is about the steps that can be taken before treatment of post-radiation mucositis. 
Oral mucositis is a common, potentially debilitating side effect of treatment for head and neck cancer. It occurs when the cells lining the mouth and throat are damaged by radiation or chemotherapy, causing painful open sores that can impact your diet and nutrition, risk of infection, and quality of life due to difficulty eating, pain, limited oral hygiene, sleep, and fatigue. Many head and neck cancer patients will develop mucositis sores in their mouth or throat during cancer treatment. When they develop and how long they last will vary depending on your specific treatment plan and individual susceptibility. Each patient's experience with mucositis will be different, but there are some things you can do before you begin cancer treatment that may help reduce your risk of developing these sores or help you recover more quickly. First, stop smoking or using tobacco products. See a dentist who's experienced working with cancer patients and make sure your teeth and any dental appliances are in good shape. Broken, sharp, or damaged teeth, as well as poor-fitting dentures, can lead to rubbing or scraping in your mouth that can worsen or promote the development of mouth sores. Any dental work that is needed, including dental cleanings and fillings, should be completed four to six weeks before starting treatment. Ask your doctor about medications that may reduce the risk of developing oral mucositis. Your doctor may also recommend photobiomodulation therapy, a type of light therapy that may reduce the severity or duration of mouth sores. Good nutrition is critical to your cancer treatment and recovery, but it is also key to healing mucositis once it begins. Sometimes, the pain of mucositis makes eating extremely painful, difficult, or impossible. If you cannot eat well, you won't receive adequate nutrition, which will slow your recovery. Ask your doctor about having a feeding tube placed before you start your treatment. That way, if you find you can no longer eat on your own, you have another way to receive the nutrients you need. Many people dislike the idea of having a feeding tube, but remember, just because you have it doesn't mean you have to use it. You can continue to eat and drink normally for as long as you're able. The tube is easily removed once your risk of mouth sores has passed. While you might not be able to completely prevent mucositis, preparing for it by quitting tobacco products, addressing your oral health, exploring preventative measures with your doctor, and thinking ahead about nutritional management can help make your treatment and recovery a little easier. For this slide, this video shows steps that we can take after the treatment. Oral mucositis is a common, potentially debilitating side effect of treatment for head and neck cancer. It occurs when the cells lining the mouth and throat are damaged by radiation or chemotherapy, causing painful open sores that can impact your diet and nutrition, risk of infection, and quality of life due to difficulty eating, pain, limited oral hygiene, sleep, and fatigue. Many head and neck cancer patients will develop mucositis sores in their mouth or throat during cancer treatment. When they develop and how long they last will vary depending on your specific treatment plan and individual susceptibility. Each patient's experience with mucositis will be different, but there are some things you can do to help manage it once it begins. If you develop mouth sores, eating may become very painful. To reduce discomfort, choose cold foods like ice cream or frozen fruit or soft, mild foods like yogurt, cottage cheese, or smoothies. Moisten foods with sauces, gravies, or dressings to make it easier to eat. Using a straw to drink can help you avoid sore spots. Stay away from acidic foods like citrus and tomato, hot or spicy foods, and crunchy or hard foods like pretzels or crusty bread as these could irritate or cut your mouth. Avoid alcoholic and carbonated drinks. To help prevent infection, Brush your teeth at least twice daily with a soft bristle or foam brush. Use a gentle toothpaste with prescription strength fluoride and floss gently once a day. Rinse your mouth frequently with an antibacterial mouthwash or salt water. If you wear dentures, remove them whenever you can so your gums can be exposed to the air. To help manage pain, suck on ice chips, eat popsicles, or sip cool drinks. Rinse your mouth before and after meals with a baking soda rinse. Over-the-counter topical pain relievers, such as lidocaine and benzocaine, may provide temporary relief. If your pain is severe, your doctor may prescribe medications, including narcotic pain relievers or medicines targeting nerve pain, such as gabapentin. Your doctor may also recommend photobiomodulation therapy, a type of light therapy that may help relieve pain. As with any side effect of treatment, if the pain and symptoms of mucositis become difficult to manage on your own, speak with your medical team about interventions that may help.
We will be moving on to the case report. The case report is extracted from SRM Journal of Research in Dental Science. The title is Oral Complication in an Irradiated Patient, a case report with review of the literature. It begins with a 52-year-old male patient with a complaint of pain in the lower front region of the jaw since one month. The pain was intermittent, dull aching type, and localized in nature. He complained of discomfort on taking food. Patient gave history of extraction of lower front teeth one month back in a private clinic due to pain and swelling. His medical history revealed a surgical intervention for a carcinoma of oesophagus within the last year followed by radiation and chemotherapy. The details of the treatment were not available, however, he stated that he received a cause of radiation five months back. He was also under psychiatric treatment. His family history was not contributory, however, the patient appeared to be in overall good physical health. The vital signs were also within the normal range. So, for examination, the patient present with a pecha on lower half face and erythematous areas of entire oral mucosa with few areas of erosion. There are other presentations, including dorsum of tongue depapillated, mucosa dry, but least sticky and non tender. And there is exposed socket relation to lower interior with denuded mucosa. And the areas in relation to T31, 32, 41, 42, and 43 were covered with slough and debris. And the palpable bony projection were present and tender. The tooth 14, 15, and 18 were also missing. And lastly, the rem remaining teeth is colored and decayed. Next, the patient also present with multiple decayed teeth. And lastly, non heal sockets. From the periapical radiograph, they were. The stumps in relation to 4-2, missing teeth in relation to 3-1, 3-2, and 4-1, radiopaque body spicules and irregular trabeculae. In the panoramic radiograph, there were generalized tooth destruction and bony changes and multiple canvas teeth in mandible and mesula that were indicated by the radiolucency in between the radioopaque area in the radiograph. Based on the case, the patient come up with a few differential diagnoses, which are osteoradionecrosis of mandibular anterior region, radiation-induced mycositis, and radiation caries. So based on the examination and investigation through periapical radiograph and dental panoramic radiograph, it is showed that the patient is suffering from osteoradionecrosis and radiation caries. So now I will present about the preventive measure. First of all, what we can do is rinse our mouth, switch and spit before and after meals and at bedtime. Next, keep the lips moist with moisturizers and then try to include foods high in protein in the diet. And if you wear dentures, remove them whenever possible to expose gingiva to the air. Okay, next, we, can, we need to avoid toothpaste with whitening agents and also avoid products that irritate the mouth and gums, and do not use lemon or glycerin swabs or toothbrushes without soft bristle. And the last one is do not wear dentures if most mouth sores are severe. For the treatment, local anesthetics, metagotin, chlorhexidine, formidin, iodine, cryo cryoprotectants like amiphostin, and a series of cytokine has been evaluated successfully as a prophylactic and therapeutic agent. Next is a cryotherapy. Radiation shields, soft laser treatment, debridement of the socket and irrigation with saline, and the last one is amoxicillin. This is the list of the references that we will use. That's all from our group. Thank you.